Political news has dominated headlines from the 2016 campaign into the beginning of President Trump's administration. The Washington Post has been behind several of the biggest stories. They include the leaked Access Hollywood video and the Justice Department's concern about Michael Flynn. The paper won a Pulitzer Prize for its investigation into Mr. Trump's charitable donations. The newspaper also broke the story about President Trump's revelation of highly classified information to Russian officials in the Oval Office. And yesterday, the Post reported that President Trump asked top intelligence officials to deny the existence of evidence his campaign colluded with Russia. Marty Barron is executive editor of the Washington Post, and we're pleased to have him here at this table. Welcome. Thank you. What's happened to the Washington Post? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean everybody's saying it's never been better, uh, and you've got remarkable reporting. Oh, well, thank you. We appreciate that. We have a great uh, team, a great team in the newsroom. Very proud of what they're doing. Uh, has the addition of a new ownership made a difference? Uh, yeah, I, uh, Jeff Bezos is now our owner. He's owned us for about three and a half years. Uh, he has brought not only financial capital, but intellectual capital. I think he's helped us adjust to the digital age, and that's been, he's been a tremendous owner, and he stood behind us. And look at today's news. I mean, how does a paper cover this kind of story? Well, we have a tremendous team that covers politics and policy, and uh, the, the Washington Post, of, of course, has done that for a very long time. And uh, this is an administration that, um, like every administration, requires uh, scrutiny. And we have more people probably covering the White House now than I think the Washington Post ever has had. Have you ever seen this many leaks, uh, Marty? You know, the president has, said, has called you all fake media leaks that the media is out to get them, mm -hmm. get him. Help us understand the leak process, how, how it operates at your place. Well, how look, can you trust the people that are leaking the stories to you? Uh, well, look, I mean, there are a lot of people in government who are concerned about what's happening. They feel there's information that the public uh, needs and deserves to know. Uh, and our reporters have a lot of experience uh, over the many years. They've uh, cultivated uh, sources in government, people who know them. They, they know the sources. Uh, these are reporters on our staff who have a lot of experience and a lot of expertise. And so uh, when people want to talk, they talk to them. And don't you double check, triple check? It's not like you just we rely on one source. Absolutely. Uh, we do not rely on one source. We always have to have extra confirmation of anything. And in many instances, the, the White House has said something that was not true. And then a day later or two days later, who confirms it? The President of the United States actually confirmed our reporting. Marty, this is a, another stunning piece of reporting, an excellent original reporting by the Washington Post about the president asking his intelligence chiefs to deny co collusion. And one of the things I read between the lines is he asked them to do it just days after Comey testified. So there's this very short period of time where the president is really ramping up his activity, not only against Comey, but also the intelligence chiefs. Um, and the question of leaks, though, just to contextualize that, people are not calling the Washington Post giving you information. Your reporters are asking questions and then they give up information, correct? Yes, uh, for the most part. These are uh, reporters who have a lot of experience, a lot of expertise. They've talked to a lot of people over many, many years. Uh, they've developed their confidence, uh, earned their confidence because of the quality reporting that they've done, and now people uh, are willing to talk to them. And they trust them. So let me ask you this. You're the editor. What questions remain unanswered for you? Oh, well, uh, there are a lot, and that's why there's an investigation <laughs> taking place. And obviously, we want to know all the same things that uh, the FBI is investigating, that the, that the uh, committees in Congress are investigating. We want to know, uh, obviously, whether there was uh, obstruction of justice, what constitutes obstruction of justice. We do want to know uh, whether there was collusion between uh, the Trump campaign and the Russians. We can't say for sure at the moment, but so there's on, a lot to know. And yet on Friday, uh, your paper, The Post, reported that a current White House official is a significant person of interest in the Russian investigation, but you didn't name who that person is. Do you know who that person is? Uh, well, we didn't name the person. I don't plan to name the person because we haven't confirmed who that is. And could when you we just give us the initials, we, if, we could <laughs> if we could confirm, we, we could do it, that. this is what we do. When we yeah. when we can't confirm, we don't report. So what do you need and to so confirm? We, yes, uh, we need an additional uh, source or two. So you do have sources that have said it's a certain person. You need that to be confirmed by other people. We need more confirmation. That's about all I can say. And what does that mean there's a, a, per, a single person who is a person, a significant person of interest? Uh, well, this is a person who is a subject to investigation, uh, someone who the, uh, the FBI and others are 
are looking at very closely uh, to see whether there was a, a particular connection to the Russians that, that had some influence in, in, in what the Russians are doing. Are you close to confirming that person? I know you said you're still looking. Uh, I, you really you're can't, I really okay. can't say it's any right. more about it. A All broader right. question. Uh, right. What does this feel like for you? I mean, you were in Boston uh, where they made a remarkable movie about what happened there when you were editor there. Uh, right. But think about this. I mean, in terms of, of you've lived through a lot of political drama. Has it ever been in your feeling and your judgment anything like this? Well, look, when I was uh, coming out of high school, uh, there was Nixon and Watergate, and so feel like uh, I wasn't in the middle of that, obviously. Yeah. But uh, this feels like that in many in many ways. Now, that's not to say that it's a perfect analogy. We'll have to see. We need we need to see the evidence. We need to do more investigating. The uh, law enforcement officers, the FBI, and the com and the congressional committees need to do more investigating. And we in, in in the journalism community need to do more investigating as well. I like Charlie's question though because I think there's there seems to be such a competition between the yeah. New York Times and the Washington Post Nora pointed out in the green room it is something that the New York Times is quoting the Washington Post this has got to be a very satisfying feeling for you Mark. you're very very calm and very controlled but aren't you guys over there doing the hula about what is happening uh, you no we, we really yes. we don't no. do that we're very <laughs> serious about yeah, what I we do I think that. people, I well, people that. know that we're held to account like everybody else is held to account yes. but we need to make sure that our information is accurate and you and that takes a lot of, that takes a lot of hard work with regard to the New York Times great you know we do not coordinate with the New York Times we compete with the New York Times and I think it's to the public benefit that there are two news organizations and other news organizations as well mm -hmm. that are vigorously pursuing this story I mean that is what the meaning of the First Amendment uh, is that the press and the public by the way mm -hmm. is supposed to hold their government to account uh, that's the meaning of uh, self-governance your, your speech at Penn State is a must read for everybody and for certainly journalists so Thank you for being here. And Thank you. Congrats to all the great reporters at the Post. Thank you very much Thank for having you me. Very much.